Shadiversity. Greetings, I'm Shad, and I want to talk to you a little bit about the appearance of medieval cottages, homes, and castles. When people think of a medieval home, they generally think of a timber-framed home with kind of white squares in between. Now, as to the reason why this is, I've made a whole video on the subject. These are called wattle and daub half-timbered homes. But I don't want to talk about that specifically, because like I said, I've done it in another video. I want to talk about the whitewash specifically, why it's white and why it's even there. And people understand that the parts of the walls in between these timber frames homes were white, it's common understanding. But what people don't generally understand is that most medieval castles also had this same whitewash. This misunderstanding, of course, comes from the fact that surviving medieval Evil castles have lost their whitewash over time and all you see is bare stone. Added with the fact that not every single castle had this whitewash, only the larger majority as we understand it. A great example of a castle that didn't have a whitewash is Carnarvon Castle. In fact, Carnarvon Castle was made with different types of stone as they built up that made these aesthetic lines that intersect the castle running horizontally. But still, most castles had it. For instance, have a look at Harlech Castle here. Looks plain stone, but this is what it actually looked like historically as shown by this model recreation. The reason why the White Tower in London was called the White Tower was because it was white. Another caveat to mention is that there were a decent amount of castles in which only the principal building was whitewashed and the outer walls were not. But with that out of the way, what is this whitewash? What is it made of and what purpose does it fill? Essentially, this whitewash is a waterproofing layer, but I'll explain why that's important a little bit later. First, what it's made out of. Principally, it's made out of lime, but there's a difference between a lime-based whitewash and a waterproof lime whitewash. First of all, lime is baked in a kiln to make what is called quicklime, and quicklime is very caustic when mixed with water. But water dilutes it into what is called slack lime, and this slack lime is the most basic lime-based paint. Now, it's sometimes mixed with chalk, but not entirely necessary, as the slack lime already appears white. In later periods, when better non-lime-based white paints were produced, lime whitewashing was considered a very poor option. And there was a saying that developed in kind of American colonial times on houses that weren't painted that was, too proud to whitewash, but too poor to paint. Because whitewashing a home was a sign of poverty. But in the medieval period, that wasn't the case. In fact, having your home whitewashed was a sign of wealth, and it made your home look much, much better. But why is whitewash worse than regular paint? It's because whitewash doesn't harden into something completely solid. If you were to brush up against it with your clothing, some of it would rub off on you and you would have kind of a faded white mark on your clothing. This also comes into the erosion issues with whitewash due to wind, but that takes a long period of time for it to completely erode off. The additional problem with regular lime whitewashed used as paint is that it isn't waterproof and rainwater will eventually cause additional erosion. But you can make a much better version of this lime whitewash that is waterproof, and this is where it becomes a very useful thing in regards to medieval cottage-style homes and, of course, castles as well. To make a waterproof lime whitewash, you start with the quick lime as before, but you add fat. This can be lard or tallow, and then you add water, which triggers the chemical reaction, and it starts to boil. This heat melts the fat, which which then bonds to the lime, changing the way it will set. It sets with smaller pores, enough to let air travel through, but not water. Of course, the fat only constitutes a smaller portion of the overall mixture. The principal ingredient is the quicklime. But when it sets, it is waterproof, and this is really useful. Because if you go watch my video on why medieval homes are made in those kind of weird squares or white rectangles in between, I explain there that it's made out of daub, which is a mixture of dirt, straw, and feces. It was a very cost-effective but useful building material. The problem with daub is, of course, erosion. When enough rainwater hits it, it will erode away that wall until the only thing left is the wattle to which the daub was bonded to. So waterproofing it becomes a very useful and important thing, and this is where the waterproof lime whitewash becomes so important. And why all medieval-style cottages had this white rectangles in between the timber frames. Of course, there must have been some buildings that didn't have it, but 
then they would run into those erosion problems. Does this transfer to stone castles? Well, yes. As we see on the ruins of stone castles in the modern day, rainwater and erosion has done some serious damage to these structures. The way they prevented that was with a waterproof whitewash coating on the surface. But what about those castles that didn't have the whitewash coating like Carnarvon? Well, first of all, Carnarvon is still suffering from erosion. And the other thing is you can do stone maintenance. The thing is, replacing stone is a lot harder than replacing the whitewash. The whitewash will eventually erode over time, mostly due to wind because it doesn't harden into something completely solid. But it is waterproof and it protects the stone. And it was also a statement of, well, the medieval people saw white, brilliant, shining castles as more prestigious and impressive than bare stone. Unless, of course, you had the money to kind of alternate the type of stone, as we see on Carnarvon Castle, as a different type or statement of wealth. That, of course, was more expensive, so if you wanted the lesser kind of statement of wealth, you could build it out of regular stone and whitewash the whole thing, you have this brilliant, white, shining castle. And most castles in the medieval period had this whitewash. And there we go, this is why medieval buildings, both the cottages and the castles, were white. It was a practical solution to a fundamental problem in medieval architecture, specifically rainwater erosion. And it just made the buildings look so much nicer as well. So thank you for watching, I hope you've enjoyed, and of course I hope to see you again. Until that time, farewell.